Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Bulfat. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting held remotely. The cabinet began by expressing its appreciation to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for following up on the conditions of the Bahraini seafarers detained in Qatar until their safe return to the kingdom as part of the care and eagerness to guarantee the rights of all citizens con consistently provided by His Majesty. The cabinet also expressed its appreciation to Oman for its role in this matter. His Royal Highness directed for the launch of the second version of the National Employment Program, which aims to create 25,000 jobs in 2021 and provide 10,000 training opportunities annually in order to further progress made making Bahraini citizens the ideal choice for local employment. The National Employment Program 2.0 will be based on three main initiatives, namely the allocation of a budget of 120 million dinars from the Labour Fund Temkin for three years 2021 to 2023, double what has been allocated during the past five years to support the employment of the Bahrainis through the wage support program, while increasing the amount and duration of support extended to those registered with the Ministry of Labour and Social Development and new entrants into the labour market. The second initiative includes extending the period of announcing vacancies before the recruitment of non-Bahraini workers from two to three weeks, and the third initiative is based on tightening security measures regarding irregular workers in addition to continuing the initiative set out in the program's first version. The cabinet welcomed the statement issued by the White House designating the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United Arab Emirates as major strategic partners, adding that this increased the impetus to further this partnership with the U.S., which has achieved notable success in confronting regional and global challenges. The cabinet then discussed a number of memorandums during the meeting and outlined the approval of the following memorandums. A memorandum from the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Fiscal Balance regarding the National Employment Program 2.0. A memorandum from the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Fiscal Balance on the sustainability of pension funds, which includes measures that will be taken to implement the six urgent reforms to extend the life of the pension funds until 2078, in addition to increasing the pensions of retirees less than 500 dinars by 3% for this year. A memorandum from from the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding the Articles of Association of the Gulf Petrochemical Industry Company, including amendments related to some of the company's shares and activities. A memorandum from the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding amending some provisions for the establishment of the Strategic and Spectrum Coordination Committee, establishing the committee as the relevant party for radio communications and implementing the provisions of the telecommunications law. A memorandum from the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding regulation of licensing for private institutions in the youth and sports sector to accept grants and donations and the issuance of a legal instrument allowing the Ministry of Youth and Sports and its minister to accept these grants and donations. A memorandum of the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding the amendment of the Procedures Manual for Selling Special Registration Numbers and the amendment of two ministerial decisions related to the traffic law. A memorandum of the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on the cooperation mechanism between the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the European Union's External Action Authority. A memorandum from the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Fiscal Balance on building a comprehensive social centre in the capital governorate in cooperation with the private sector. A memorandum from the Ministerial Committee for Legal Affairs regarding the government's response to six proposals submitted by the Council of Representatives. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met remotely with a number of officials and representatives from companies operating on the Kingdom's airport expansion project to review progress on the project. During the meeting, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister highlighted the efforts and commitment shown by the companies working on the airport expansion project to complete the project on schedule. His Royal Highness praised the Kingdom's skilled workforce who have had an important impact on the completion 
completion of the airport expansion project and wish them success in operating the new passenger terminal building from the 28th of January. He extended his gratitude to all involved in achieving this key strategic national project, which will further enhance the kingdom's aviation and logistics sector. The officials and representatives from the companies working on the airport expansion project then briefed His Royal Highness on the progress made within the project, including the final preparations required to begin operations of the new passenger terminal building. The officials and representatives of the companies extended their gratitude for the opportunity to meet His Royal Highness, noting that his ongoing commitment and support has helped steer this project towards success. The Minister of Transportation and Communications, Kamal bin Ahmed Mohammed, was also in attendance at the meeting. The first deputy president of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, president of Bahrain Athletics Association and president of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, Zahana Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, has issued directives to hold the fifth Bahrain Sports Day. His Highness directed the relevant parties to prepare for the national event in coordination with all public and private sector organizations while maintaining all necessary health precautions. He added that the Olympic Committee prepared a full plan for this year's Sports Day in cooperation with the Ministry of Information which will cover the event. He added that the pandemic made it necessary to take precautionary measures, but that he is nevertheless keen on holding the event, which has become a national occasion to maintain the enthusiasm for sports and further promote it as a way of life, along with the values of love and loyalty across the kingdom. He called on all participating parties to follow all precautionary measures in light of the people's high degree of awareness and expressed full confidence in the organizing body behind the event to meet the challenges of the time. The Commander-in-Chief of the Bahrain Defense Force, BDF Field Marshal, Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, received Royal Artillery Commander, Major General, Sheikh Khalifa bin Hassan Al Khalifa, and the injured BDF Operational Duty Group, who participated in the Arab Coalition Forces. The Commander-in-Chief awarded them the Medal of Distinction for their courage on the southern border and prayed to God to grant them a speedy recovery. Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed expressed his appreciation for BDF brave men who made great efforts during their mission to defend legitimacy in Yemen. The Minister of Defense Affairs, Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan al naimi was also present at the meeting. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fawzi Zainal, expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister over the government's positive response to the Council Services Committee's vision on pension reforms. She asserted that the government had studied the proposals and approved them, noting that a draft law, including the proposed amendments, will be referred back to the Representatives Council for further study. The Speaker affirmed that the government's positive response to lawmakers' demands further strengthens its ongoing effective cooperation with the Council. She added that the government's approval to increase pensions is in line with the directives of His Majesty and the keen interest of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, as well as the fruitful outcome of the joint meetings between the authorities. She confirmed the keenness of the Council of Representatives, the Government and the Shura Council to enhance their joint action in order to preserve public interests and those of subscribers and retirees to maintain the sustainability of the resources of insurance funds and protect their assets. The Shura Council Chairman Ali bin Saleh Hassala praised the Cabinet's decision today to raise by 3% for this year the pension of retirees getting less than BD500. He stressed that the decision issued by the Cabinet is in its meeting, chaired remotely today by the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, will contribute to boosting social stability for Bahraini families through continuous improving on their living conditions. Hassala noted that the decision is in line with the continuous directives of his Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to boost citizens' welfare by providing every support to them. He pointed out the unrelenting efforts of the government, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, to achieve the aspirations of His Majesty the King and the Bahraini people out of belief that citizen security and stability is a prerequisite for the continuity of the comprehensive development. 
The Undersecretary of the Ministry of Health, Dr. Walid al Mana, urged full compliance with all mandatory precautionary measures to combat COVID-19. He affirmed that the spike in the number of cases is caused by negligence within the community and stressed the need to abide by the health protocols and mandatory precautionary measures. He affirmed the importance of the efforts made by the healthcare workers and the front lines to combat the virus and noted that the strategies Bahrain follows to combat this pandemic have been internationally praised. Dr. Almana reminded individuals experiencing COVID-19 symptoms to use the hotline 444 and follow the guidelines. And the Ministry of Health said today that the number of coronavirus cases reached 2,950 with 258 recoveries and 339 registered new cases. 169 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 156 are contacts of active cases and 14 are travel related. The Ministry urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.